see the aorta or the inferior vena cava that would be off to the side here. You can see them over here. You can actually see the, the aorta, the abdominal aorta, and the inferior vena cava here. Uh, but we're going to go beyond that. We're going to go after that. And so we have right here uh, the renal artery and vein. So that's what this is. So we have the renal artery and vein. And so I'm just going to talk about the artery uh, structures, or arterial uh, structures. And um, pretty much the vein and structures follow suit. Okay? So let's start off uh, right here. And this, of course, is the renal artery. Here we have the renal artery. Now, immediately once the renal artery goes into the kidney, it separates. You can actually see that at this point, there's a branch that comes off here and a branch that comes up here. See that? Those two little branches here. When it when it separates, it segments, and as a result of that, we call those segmental arteries. So these right here, where it segments away, are the segmental arteries. Okay. Now the segmental arteries will then separate and then turn into what are called lower arteries. The reason they're called lower arteries is because the blood vessels are going to travel towards this area here. These areas here are basically the pyramids uh, of, the, of the medulla. So basically these structures right here. And these are the pyramids of the medulla. And basically these are lobes. So each one of these is a lobe. And because the arteries are heading towards the lobe, they're called lower arteries. So we have the segmental here, here and here. And then they separate and go towards the lobe. So here is a lower. Here is a lower. Here is a lower. So these are lower. Here and here and here. But before that, they were segmental. Okay? Now, the lower will then split. And when they split, they will then go in between the lobes. You can see here, here's blood vessel right here going in between, here's another one going in between, in between, in between, in between. The ones that are going in between here are called interlober because they are going in between the lobes. So these are interlober. Okay? The interlober will be will remain interlober until they get to the base of the pyramid, at which time they will then curve over and form an arc. Okay? So you can see how this is curved over and forming an arc there. So at this point, we call that the arcuate artery. It is called the arcuate artery because the word arcuate is actually derived from the word arch. In fact, arcuate uh, is actually to arc. Uh, so it's forming an arch. So that is why it's called the arcuate. Okay. Now, there are blood vessels that are coming off of the arcuate that are actually protruding into the cortex of the kidney. These blood vessels that are protruding into the cortex of the kidney are known as interlobular. Okay? These blood vessels here are known as interlobular. Now, um, because there were such uh, issues with people confusing the interlobular with that of the interlober. The interlobular also has another name now, and it is called the cortical radiant artery. These blood vessels are called the cortical radiant arteries because they radiate into the cortex of the kidney, hence the name cortical radiant. That is what these are. They're actually going into the cortex. Now, next to the cortical radiant are these little small yellow balls. These little small yellow balls are the glomerular capsule of the nephron. And you can see that the yellow balls are actually covered by a little bit of red. The little bit of red that is covering the glomerular capsule is actually the afferent arteriole. It is the blood vessel that is going towards the glomerular capsule. Hence the name afferent arteriole because afferent means going towards. Okay? 
Now there are blood vessels that are coming off of the glomerular capsule and actually heading towards these blue blood vessels here. So you can see there's red blood vessels that are heading towards these blue blood vessels. The red blood vessels that are heading towards these little blue blood vessels here uh, are the efferent arterioles. They're going away from the glomerular capsule. So that's what these are. Uh, and eventually the efferent arterioles will turn into what is called the paratubular capillaries and the vasa recta. The, the reason they call it paratubular capillaries is because the capillaries wrap around the tubes of the nephron. It is also called the vasa recta because the vasa recta, the term vasa recta means what? Anybody know? Straight veins or straight vessels? Recta means straight. Vasa meaning vein or vessel. And so these are going to be the straight veins or vessels that are going to run down the uh, loop of Henley. Uh, so that's what we're talking about there. So, so we're talking about the vasa recta and the paratubular capillaries. After which, now we're starting the venous uh, blood supply that then leaves uh, from there. So then we have, of course, the uh, intralobular vein, which also would be known as the uh, cortical radiate vein, uh, which then goes into the arcuate vein, and so forth and so forth. So uh, basically that pathway that ends uh, kind of the same way as it begins. Okay? So you're good so far on the blood vessels? You should be able to identify the blood vessels on this model. That is going to be important. You need to be able to identify the blood vessels. I have two of these models, which means I have at least eight questions I can ask with this model. Uh, be prepared. Now, uh, on this model, I like this model, uh, because this model uh, shows you uh, the uh, components of the kidneys a little bit better uh, than this model does. Uh, you can actually see the medullary pyramid as it, it sticks out in a three-dimensional uh, structure here. So you can actually see the medullary pyramid. And at the tip,